Okay. Good evening, good evening everybody. Um, my name is Paul Lucas and I'm a founder of Proactive Home Physio. And I'm just going to bring up my PowerPoint now. I, I run a sort of a community-based physiotherapy service um, in Northamptonshire. And um, I treat patients post-stroke and those that are living with the symptoms of Parkinson's disease and elderly clients that have mobility issues. Um, so today, this evening, um, we're going to be just sharing some of the tips and hints that um, I've sort of picked up from my own practice when delivering physio using tele-rehab, um, but also sort of sharing some comments from other therapists and my peers. Um, so a few tips generally. Um, being organised with a set plan for the session, I think that was the key piece of feedback that I've heard from a lot of my peers that um, you pick up where the patient wants to go with a session when you're perhaps in their home or in a clinic but uh, delivering the session over tele rehab we're having to be a lot more organized and um, to keep the flow of the session continuing um, so emailing a plan of the session in advance is a, a really good first first point uh, and also having equipment and exercise sheets to hand uh, or to share on your screen so that you can go along with them um, so as a physio, often we work with patients that have balance issues. Um, so some of the practical tips are really just ensuring that the, you know, the safety aspects are in place, um, risk assessing whether your patient is going to be able to um, complete the exercises safely. Um, often I've found that so far really using uh, tele-rehab to deliver um, sort of more standing-based balance exercises, some, some dynamic elements as well, but just ensuring that they have a carer or a family member that can assist them. Um, I've been asking myself the question and asking the patient the question, sort of how confident do you feel about this next movement? And I think that's a really, a really good thing to get the patient thinking about what they feel they can manage, because clearly you're not going to be directly next to them to um, support them so there's an, an element of trust um, but again that question applies to the family member as well so you know how confident do you feel that you could support your relative with this exercise um, and again talking through it first with clear and specific directions to the patient and also their care or family member and uh, giving uh, advice about reducing the risk of falls uh, can be delivered quite easily over tele-rehab. The lower limb is much the same really. Um, obviously seated strengthening and stretching exercises can be done fairly safely um, and also standing strengthening and stretching exercises. Bed exercises, obviously if the camera angle is up, the patient has a camera facing their bed, you can look at sort of bed mobility. Uh, I've included mobility on there as well, but this would be sort of, you know, there'd be a dynamic element to this clearly. So you'd be sort of relying on a, perhaps a family member to sort of be the camera person and using tele rehab enables the patient to sort of perhaps record a video clip of their gait pattern and uh, they can email you it and we, you know, it can be, uh, you can discuss it in the next sort of session. Upper limb, um, upper limb stretches really can be uh, quite easily taught with modeling. So demonstrating the stretch in the camera uh, allows the patient to see what they need to do. Um, some of the upper limb exercises, you would sort of have to be quite clear about the specific instructions as well. And particularly sort of from experience working with patients that have had strokes, um, having a family member to sort of provide some facilitation to get the correct movement is, is really important and, and works well. Um, providing edu education to family and carers. And again, that uh, can be in the form of sort of a stretching plan. Um, a colleague of mine gave a really good piece of uh, feedback about uh, when you're viewing the carers doing the stretches for a patient, it really gives you an idea of how they're gonna, how they're gonna do the stretches when you're not there, uh, which is, what we're sort of aiming for. So it enables you to sort of see clearly what they're, 
what they're doing and, and, and you can give some advice quite clearly from a distance. Uh, and also, again, it helps to sort of, you can use tele rehab to provide information on setting up things like electrical stimulation and TENS for uh, weak muscles and sensory issues post-stroke. Um, with vision, um, we've actually found that it can be quite easier to assess and see some deficits um, with eye movements, uh, particularly following a stroke. And also actually using tele-rehab, it feels less intrusive um, than often having to get quite close to a patient's um, face to see their eye movements clearly. Um, you can It's less intrusive as you can turn the camera off and um, sort of observe them moving their eyes from left to right up and down diagonally um, to sort of assess their sort of gaze stability for one for one reason so that's a real benefit um, and also looking at their sort of peripheral vision um, following a stroke in particular um, a colleague another colleague an OT colleague mentioned about uh, screen screen sharing um, perhaps a, a picture of a um, a setting or landscape on, on our screen and then having the patient sort of focus on the center of the picture and then kind of pay attention to their peripheral vision which I thought was a, a really good idea. I'll just I brought an outcome measure slightly into it but um, I won't spend too long on outcome measures but so the first few there on the list um, can be done sort of with this with the camera static um, and clearly, you know, making sure that their balance is appropriate, uh, then uh, th those can be done quite easily. Um, six minute walk I've included towards the bottom and 10 minute walk. Um, six minute walk in particular, I've often got patients to sort of go away and uh, measure themselves, um, how, how far they can walk over six minutes um, to measure their stamina. And then they can feed that back in the next sort of tele rehab session. So I'd just like to move on to some of the technology now that um, I've been using in practice. So I'm going to talk about some apps in a bit more detail. And um, clearly Zoom is very useful for communicating. And um, some of my uh, colleagues that work in the NHS um, have been using Attend Anywhere, which seems to be getting good reviews and, and good feedback. Um, at Proactive Home Physio, I use a, a particular software called PhysiTrack. Um, which is an exercise prescription program. Uh, it allows us to put together uh, exercise programs in video format, uh, which makes it more sort of accessible for some patients because um, they get to see the whole exercise performed. And they can also have it in a printed copy if they wish. Um, and they get a login code for a app or that uh, they can log into the website um, and then they can track uh, they can enter their sort of data for their exercises that they're completing uh, and I can see that in sort of live time um, which allows me to sort of monitor their progress uh, distance and then track their sort of adherence with the exercises and then we can uh, have a consultation over the telehealth option. Um, so I've just got a few sort of screenshots now of the software so I really really like using this tool this software because it is so easy to use and the clients really love it as well. So you can see from this screen that it's quite easy to um, assign a new exercise program uh, or start a video call. Um, this is a screen that allow, enables me to sort of put the patient's email address in and then they receive the link. And there's a just a screenshot of some of the exercises that potentially we've put together and if you see at the top right of the screen there's a sort of basket and we can edit the exercises to prescribe a set amount of reps. This is from the patient's perspective so this is what they'd see on their app um, so they've got the option to play the video and watch the exercise and then they can press complete enter their um, repetitions and sets in and also there's a feedback option about how, how did it go. 
um, and I get them to rate that. It's actually in the pain, like a vast pain scale, but um, I get them to rate that from sort of naught to 10 in terms of effort level. And then they can track their, their progress, as can I. And I really like the, so the, how it presents. Um, this is just an example of the, the screen that the patient will receive when they're about to have a telephone uh, video call. And that's a tracking page that I can see of the patient's progress. So that's PhysiTrack. Um, another app that, that's uh, really useful at the moment, um, I encourage everybody to have a look at the, the link um, is EXI. It used to be called iPrescribe, but it's um, recently changed its name. But it's uh, an app that allows you to, it's a, uh, enter in your medical information. So perhaps you've got uh, diabetes or st stroke, or Parkinson's, um, and it allows, it puts together a um, evidence-based uh, exercise program. Um, it's developed by physiotherapists as well, and it's NHS apps uh, library approved. And it's all designed about making you sort of reach your target amount of exercise for the week. And as you can see from the right hand side of the screen, there's uh, different options to what exercise you can do. So if you're not, if you feel particularly sort of uh, motivated towards one area than another, you can choose what you want to do on that given day. And it gradu gradually builds up your exercise to increase your stamina. And it has uh, the option to have the patient uh, collect their data and, and submit it to you um, so you can sort of track their progress as well. And then finally, um, another app that I've been using recently um, that helps sort of promote patients sort of self-management and maintain their activity levels at a, via sort of tele-rehab means is um, Clock Yourself app. So it's the, the, my elderly clients particularly like this one. Um, as it combines a sort of cognitive and physical challenge um, into a brain game that makes you think on your feet. And there's a couple of links there to have a, have a look at that. It's really, really good fun. Um, the patient starts with their feet in the middle and uh, they pretend that they've got a, a clock face and they have to sort of step their feet to the, to the numbers. And um, you can change the sort of speed at uh, steps per minute uh, you can add in upper limb tasks or cognitive tasks to to sort of increase the challenge. But all of those um, all of those software things I've been using recently um, to sort of good effect, and it really just helps patients sort of do something in their own time and really promote their self management. Thank you. That's um, that's all from me.